would like to welcome each of you on board. Hope that you have a pleasant flight to King Salmon. in and head out of here. Sweet home, buddy. You recognize this spot? I do. I feel better. <laughs> Good. Cheated death. Yeah, Back absolutely. here again. Hey, good luck, buddy. couple of days back at the bald knob with the tin shack hunting some bears pretty late spring this year a lot of snow surprised to hear pilots are saying they're seeing quite a few bears out and about I guess they've been seeing uh, quite a few bears chasing sows breeding sows beautiful day she's pretty cool I'm guessing it's just uh, barely above freezing Maybe, maybe not, maybe not even, it's right, probably right at freezing, right here anyway. Go check out the cabin, make sure everything's honky-dory. Get it all lined up, ready to roll. Here we are. Unlock the door. See what we got. See, we got a porcupine chewing at the door here. Get her all lined out, maybe. I spot a few bears yet today. Spring is just pouring out this year. Kind of one of those things in life that you really appreciate doing this, just taking the water right out of the ground. Be able to fill her right up as well, she is. Pretty sweet little deal here. lunch get pretty cold yeah it's it's uh, 30 degrees outside so just getting some hot food in my belly the weather's starting to set down a little bit uh, chance I might get a hunter in tonight I don't know um, season opens today's the 8th season opens the 10th so it's 
So I'll get her all tidied up, ready to go. If he makes it in tonight, great. If not, hopefully tomorrow. May the 9th, about 8 a.m., day before season. Got a fair bit of fresh snow last night, about three inches. Got a few caribou down the valley. Visibilities, man, maybe a hair over a mile. It won't be flying in just yet, that's for sure. 1 p.m., it's warming up. Snow is slowing down, clouds are lifting. The snow has melted off the alders for the most part. It was pretty much just pure white when I woke up this morning. Cows and calves, caribou, about 300 yards away. Hello, it's Billy. She's definitely flyable here. Don't know what, you guys got any news over in your end? Well, weather's flyable. My hunter's in town, but he didn't get his gear. So they just didn't have enough room on the plane, I guess, for anybody's gear. So it sounds like all the hunters are back in town. So hopefully the gear will show up tomorrow, tomorrow and the weather will be good and we'll get out of here. But it's looking good, it's still cold, but yeah, I wish I could hunt tomorrow, but that's the way she goes. Uh, what are you guys doing here? Give her a go in the morning, give us a call early. Yeah, I'll give you a holler. Did you guys get the gear in or are you just making it work? No, nope, we got the gear in finally. It came uh, unannounced. Well, you have a good evening. Sorry to wake you up again. We thought we'd give her a stab. Um, the last report we had was uh, uh, not too bad of visibility, but uh, anyway, yeah, we'll give her a go tomorrow. Sounds good, you guys fly safe. Okay, talk to you later. Well that was kind of exciting, I guess it's as exciting as it gets. I'm glad I wasn't sleeping yet, it was 8.30. I couldn't believe those guys buzzed in. Last I heard there was no chance of them getting their gear. But apparently they had an extra flight come in and delivered some of the gear. Uh, it sounded like, uh, yeah, just with the snow, gusty wind, snow on the strip. Just didn't want to try it, so I guess there's tomorrow. You guys are coming in to try it. Kurt landed at this shorter crosswind strip. The snow is so slick, they don't have any brakes. So they just came in empty. They don't have any hunters. They dropped some hunters and some on the beach, I'm guessing. Kurt, this is stiff. I'm about 90 degrees to it. Yeah, Roger. Grabbing into the wind. He's got to fight that crosswind so much, it just makes it that much more difficult. And then he runs if a gust of wind picks up. A tough landing, no doubt. Made her look pretty darn easy. But if he's got a passenger, it's that much more weight to try to stop. We are idiots. <laughs> Crazy and crazier. <laughs> I, I couldn't get it to turn. She would not turn. And we're gonna have to get this shovel off so we can use our brakes. Well, I was thinking. What's the hold up here, Paula? Hell, I've been reading a good book. I don't blame you. I'll be done by tomorrow, so. Okay. Yeah, I'd make a stab at this. Don't work. Pushing the plane backwards. some elevation. Curtis is off. Good deal. Looks like I'm gonna get my man. I'm gonna head back to the cabin, grab the phone, give him a holler at base camp, let him know that they they can do the strip here. Then they'll get my hunter ready. I'm down at the airport so that he's ready when they get there. So we don't miss this little break in the weather, if you can call it that. The wind's just died down five miles an hour is probably all, but 
five miles an hour is quite a bit, so. Rut didn't give me a buzz, but he made her. Glad to be here again. You're, uh, what? I guess you were sitting in Sand Point for two days? Two days. One day waiting for equipment, and the other day waiting for the weather to smarten up. Well, we, you made her in at least, eh? Lloyd and I were sitting in the cabin, saw an eagle fly by, and then all of a sudden a bunch of caribou came running by. The cows will still have their antlers, the bulls will have their fresh new antlers. Maybe they're all cows, I don't know. Lloyd doesn't like this cabin. Says he'd rather be in a tent and roughing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got no wrong there. <laughs> Not Lloyd is digging this. Not real warm in there, but by golly, it's nice standing up. And I'm gonna get out of this weather. We'll have plenty of it tomorrow, no doubt. Yeah, hopefully this stuff breaks. We should have some bears moving. It's a greasy bacon and eggs kind of morning, don't you think, Lloyd? Yeah, I think that'll get us started here this morning. Keep us warm on the hill, because she's pretty wintry out there. The door was about drifted in this morning. But we got blue sky above. Boy, and that wind's still gusting. It was rolling pretty good last night. So if we can get her maybe pushing 50 degrees, that sun keeps shining, we ought to have some bears popping out today. Finally got her first bear. Pretty blonde. It's a decent sized bear, but I'm guessing it's a sow. It doesn't have a real long neck. I figured we'd have to see a bear sooner or later today. Hoping to catch a big boar moving this evening. So far, day two's pretty much been a repeat of day one. Maybe a bit colder. The sun was just shining a couple minutes ago, probably a minute ago. We are having fun now, eh, Lloyd? This is a good time. This is it. This is what we came to Alaska for. <laughs> There's the first bear of the day. Doesn't look like a real big bear. Walking on that skyline. About two o'clock, sun's just been shining for about 15 minutes, and boom, there's a bear. About 9.30. Calling her a wrap for day two. for 11 hours now. Kind of funny, I was just thinking when I first started packing up here 15 years ago on Kodiak Island, it seemed like the days just <laughs> never ended. Now, it seemed like the day just got started. Just sitting here all day for 11 hours, we'll sit here for another hour or two yet. We haven't even seen a bear today. And man, this has just been such a productive spot over the years, I just can't believe that uh, we're not seeing any bears, but we're not. I have definitely not lost hope. I know it's just a matter of time. Lloyd, on the other hand, I think he's starting to scratch his head a little bit. Lloyd don't say too much, but uh, I, think he's, I think he's still got confidence. I don't know. Kind of feels like there might be a storybook ending to this hunt for some reason. Don't get much better than this, does it? No. The lighting and everything, she's pretty sweet. Did 
This is what we would call in the guiding business a boo-boo bear. Young sow. Kind of nice having her in the area though. Some big old love struck stud get on her trail. Come waltzing in here. She's a mile and a half off probably. She's just bedding in that open flat soaking up the sun. Got a young boar about two and a half miles away in this snow slide. Probably heading over to this low saddle to our left like they like to do when they get on that slope. That's usually where they end up going. But Eight and a half foot bear probably at most. But it's a good sign, second bear before noon. This bear said, screw the saddle, he's just gonna go right over the top. Look at the way he's digging in there, that's darn near vertical. Look at that, he's all sprawled out, he might slip. Yeah, he's sliding down a little. Give him an A for effort though. He's got a little determination built up, he's going for her again. He's gonna be inverted to try it there. Yeah, I think he's got her figured out. He can't get over that precipice. I'm gonna scoot over there to that little notch. Well, that was a fine bit of high drama there on the Alaska Peninsula. Spotted what looks to be a pretty decent bear. The heat waves are pretty good and he's six miles away at least. So they're definitely moving today. That's the fifth bear and it's one o'clock. That's more bears than we've seen the previous three days in the first few hours today. Right in the center of the screen is the sixth bear for the day. God only knows how big he is and God only knows why I'm even looking up there. It, it's at least eight miles away. It might be ten miles where that bear is. It's just how clear the air is up here. Once in a while my buddy Reno would camp on the ridge right over there. I could see it right on that little shallow ridge. Not the snowy one, but just this nearest one. The one at the top of the frame right there. He set his camp there. Kurt the pilot, GPS, straight line. It was just over seven miles. So he's there, and that bear's way up there. Just to give you some scale of what we're looking at here. Pretty immense, pretty humbling being in this country. Now she's snowing. Brutal. We need a break in the weather. in the cabin, staring out the window. Lloyd and I are sipping coffee, telling stories. Are you glad that we got a cabin and no tent, Lloyd? You betcha. <laughs> I appreciate this. Yeah, it's nice being able to stand up. Some of those, Most of the other guides are in tents. Some of them you can stand up in the very center. This cabin's pretty nice. You can hang the stuff up. It's hard to heat this cabin, but It'll dry out. You just hang it in here. There's no sense we can't hardly see outside. And uh, yeah, it's nice. Nice riding the storm out when you can stand up and, and uh, just be comfortable because this might stay here for two, three days. We had day six. Saw a bunch of dirt on this slope when we left camp. Kept an eye on it. Didn't see anything outside of it. And then we got here to the glass and knob and saw a bear pop out. Laid down and went back in and she came back out with a couple of cubs. So far I've just seen two cubs. They're this year's cubs. So they just popped out here yesterday afternoon when we were in camp or last night. Finally got some warmer weather. It's uh, about 40 degrees today right now. This is pretty cool. This is what makes hunting in Alaska so cool. 
I just watched those two little cubs pretty much take their first steps of their lives. They slide down that mountain and they're nervous. They don't, they don't even really know how to walk yet and they just dig their nails into that ice. They're so scared of sliding down the slope. They're clinging to mama's belly right now, probably nursing, but hopefully they'll survive. But I'll keep an eye on there. Two years ago, had a sow pop out of her den in the same slope right about there. Boar came along, fought the sow, killed her two cubs, and then uh, the next day, it was in the evening, and then the next day we went over and killed him right there. He's a nine and a half footer. So yeah, them boars, they'll, they'll try to eat those cubs, and uh, then the sow will come back into heat a couple weeks later or whatever, and he can try to breed her and pass along his bloodlines. That's how they've survived. The strong survive in this country. Got about an eight and a half, nine foot boar over there. Heading the other way though. Morning of day eight. Haven't hardly really hunted for the last 36 hours. We've been weathered in, fogged in. Now we're seeing some bears. Got a young bear, looks like a sow. Real young bear right there. Yeah, she didn't hear me. And then there's another bear. Right there. I haven't I just spotted that one. I'll take a look at it right now. Looks like you got this young sow here. It's heading right at us. And then this looks like a maybe a nine foot boar. I'll have to look at it some more, but it looks kinda like a boar to me. So he's probably tailing her. We got a bear somewhere between eight and a half and nine, but probably maybe a little closer to eight and a half. Definitely a boar. Kind of bony, thin. We're walking right beneath the knob that the guys have taken many bears from before. The wind's pretty much from us to him right now, so it wouldn't necessarily be a slam dunk even if we wanted him. This is the best part about hunting this stuff. Yeah. Seeing. <laughs> yeah, we're finally seeing bears. Yeah, it's about, I don't know, a little after 10. Now the sun's really starting to shine. A little after 10, we've seen for sure four different bears. So I take that back. Hell, we've seen five different bears. Brett just landed with a resupply of grub. And then this bear that we were watching, kind of deliberating whether to take or not. Pushing nine feet. He actually took off kind of trotting away a little bit when the airplane circled. But he ain't a very big bear. You can see when he's going away his hips held their narrow. You just can tell he's very young. So I mean, chances are that's probably like, a, and that you know that sow doesn't strike me as being real big. That's probably like an eight-foot sow, and he's not much bigger than her. Mm -hmm. You know, and the sow's got to be pretty big to hit eight and a half. I mean, you and I both admire this guy's tenacity, but. <laughs> so yeah, we've seen. Five bears so far. I don't know what it is. It's maybe getting close to 11 by now. So we're just gonna dig in and try to uncover just a, I think anything bigger than that bear that we just saw. You know, anything that's definitely over nine, we'll definitely be giving him a go. Here's that wolf, or at least one of them that's been howling. Yeah, it looks like a fairly young bear. Pretty sure it's a sow. See her coming out of the high country. We got a boar and a sow. Right over in there somewhere. Be a two mile pull. We're gonna stuff it and go, Lloyd. This is what we've been waiting for. 
7.30 p.m. We got about four hours to do this. Go time. It's a different boar in a sow that was right in front of us. This boar looks like going to be over nine foot anyway, I think. So the race is on. Ready for this, Lloyd? Oats, tag, and everything's ready to go. Adios. Well, Lloyd and I packed all our stuff up, getting ready to tear over there after this boar and sow. And they decide to tear up over the hill. We'll be keeping an eye on them now. Let's see what they do. Well, those bears, they got right to the tip top of that ridge. Better keep an eye out for other bears in here. And uh, then all of a sudden the sow just bolted right back down the hill. So who knows what they'll do. We're just going to get up there and give her a whirl. It's, uh, I think it's, uh, I didn't look real close, but it looks like it's over nine foot bar. And Lloyd would definitely be happy with anything close to nine at this point. So, yeah, here we go. He's breeding her in the snow. Hell, they're rolling down the snow right now. He's breeding her in the snow. We got the rain and the sea fog moving in. So we're racing against them going up back up the mountain. Racing against the rain and the fog. Racing against dark. This just might work out. <laughs> Do you see them? They're halfway down the hill. There's the boar and the sow's right in there, 600 yards. Have to have a little fancy finagling going on now. Just wait. Just wait. I'm gonna wait till that sow is clear. Just let him step out in the open. Okay, she laid down. Hold it, don't shoot. She's behind him, so don't shoot. Just wait. Good. Just wait. He's gonna probably mount her. You better not shoot yet. Now she pulls away right there. You better get it done on this shot, buddy, because uh, might be your last chance for procreation. Oh, they're lovers. Oh, I can't even see her. <laughs> she blends in with the grass. If you like it, take the one on the left. Tree's still in front of them. I think you could blow through that if you take them right in the chest. Right you could the wait. Left. Okay, just wait. If you like it, if you're good and steady, go ahead. Reload. Okay, he's rolling. He's rolling. He's rolling. He's sliding. He's sliding. She ain't even moving. Yeah, you whomped him pretty solid there, Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> Got yourself a brown bear, buddy. Good job. He finished the deal. He ain't uh, he ain't the whopper we were hoping for. But he's, he's a brown bear. He's a brown bear. Yeah. And after eight days, yeah, he ain't moving. Yeah, he's gonna have to be flirting with the nine foot mark anyway. We'll be taking a look. Well, congrats, Lloyd. We made a pretty good pull. I didn't want to sit here and get fogged in and have to trounce back to camp. We got two solid miles. Camp's on the other side of that knob. So we'll get up here, maybe take a couple pictures, check him out, 
and boogie back. Yeah, yeah we, uh, well, it's been a heck of a late spring. There's still frost in the ground, which has actually helped our stock, so it wasn't so spongy getting over here, but we haven't seen a ton of bears. We passed up a bear that was probably about like this this morning, between eight and a half and nine foot. And I'm thinking this one's gonna be about eight, 10. 8, 8, 8, 10, he's going to be somewhere in there. He might make the 9 foot mark. He's got an 8 inch, eight inch pad, so which says he should be 9, but I don't know if he'll make it or not. Uh, pretty good bear. He's got a, a bit of a rub on his neck there. Brother or not, the hide looks good. He's got long claws. Pretty big uh, size difference between them sows and the boars, eh? For sure. You know, that sow, you, they say sows, they don't come into heat till, or they, they're not sexually mature till they're 5 or 6. So, I mean, that was a mature sow that he was with, and he was definitely bigger than it. So it's probably about a seven year old bear, this boar I'm guessing. 150 yard shot, one shot. Hammered him pretty hard, no doubt. And uh, yeah, you can't always get the 10 footers, but hey, you got a nice bear, got a good hide. If Lloyd's happy, I'm happy. Everybody's happy. <laughs> I like it. Well, it's, uh, what do we got? After nine o'clock, probably snap a couple pictures and uh, Probably roll him down a little bit further, maybe to this flat spot, and uh, head for home here. We got breakfast down. Ready to skin that beast out today, Lloyd? Yeah, that's uh, the agenda for the day, sounds like, is get that done and get her back to camp. We got it. It looks like a half decent day. It rained all night. Boy, the ground's pretty soggy. Just light sprinkles, and you got them all skinned out. Been raining and snowing blowing it's still raining now taped him out just over nine foot so he's got a nice height he's got a few little rubs there up by his neck where he's been fighting and scratched and stuff but other than that he's got a fine hide not too shabby weather cleared up for us anyway there I know we're getting on some decent ground that's frozen still so yeah, weather cleared up for us. That's real nice. Well, we made her back at the cabin, left the bear hide out, made the call. Sounds like they want to try to get us today, I guess. Sounds like it's supposed to be blowing and gusting tomorrow. So it's always like this. You just sit, the hunt is nice and slow paced. You know, finally we shoot a bear, you get it, you get back, hurry up, pack it. How soon can you be ready? So now we're racing to pack our stuff up. But uh, so yeah, well, congrats, Lloyd. Got a nice bear. Yeah, it uh, finally all came together for us. Uh, like we said before, third time here. Uh, first shot we had at a bear and we made her count, so kind of got what we came for. Yeah, well Lloyd was with a different outfitter, two, two hunts, uh, kind of in southeast Alaska. Uh, two bear hunts and didn't get a bear, so glad to get him one here. And now you're shooting kind of a, a wildcat caliber. That was kind of neat. It definitely did the job on your bear. Yeah, it's uh, what it is is a Remington 700 that's been rechambered to uh, 338 edge, which is a 300 Ultra Mag necked out to 338. And I'm using the 300 grain Acubon bullets that are just new on the market. And uh, from all what we've seen, they seem to do pretty good. Yeah. That's a heavy bugger there. It's uh, 15 pounds that unit. But Lloyd yeah. says he. How, how far did you shoot a deer? Uh, we know to 960. Yeah. But it's uh, it's definitely not a Alaska gun. It's not a it's not a Packer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice on the recoil though. It's got a muzzle brake and 15 pounds. I'd imagine there can't be a whole lot of kick no, to it. No, it's it's good. Yeah, I just like to say it's been a been a real good adventure. Uh, finally, kind of a, a dream come true for me. So, just. Uh, Glad to see it all come together. Yeah, Lloyd figures he's been dreaming about shooting a brown bear for over 30 years, and it's done now, eh? Been a long time, so. Yeah, well, fantastic. Lloyd, been a pleasure hunting with you again. Yeah, you betcha. Hope we can do it again in the future. You bet. The boys just flew over. They're doing a resupply to another camp that's still hunting. Should be, they'll be here any minute. Take us back to San Point. BR549, got your ears on, good buddy, come back. Here we are, yep, go ahead. I got a threshold marked for you here, I'll stand, I'll stand right on the threshold, does that work? Yeah, we actually saw it there, Bill, when we came overhead, so I think we'll make it. I'm coming in first, you 
might just want to go get in the cabin. That probably a fine idea, Brettley. I guess the hell was far away from that hill was that good. Brett's coming in first. It was real soft when he dropped in our stuff. You can see where he dug in because we've been getting so much rain and the frost isn't out of the ground yet. They got a nice wind. He'll be able to stop in no time. Look at that. <laughs> You're showing out, Chief. Okay. Brett pulled her off in 50 feet. Okay. That one was about 40. <laughs> I knew if I put the pressure on him, he'd perform. He had the brakes locked up. <laughs> he wasn't going to be bested. <laughs> he just skipped her right in. <laughs> it's a beautiful scene, ain't it? Dropped off some propane to the cabin for next year. Another bear season done. <laughs> Heading home, gonna see mama and the kids. See what they're up to. Are these kids nuts or what? Never a dull moment, is there? No. Hi, boo boo. Hi, boo boo. Can I come in your house? This is what I miss when I'm in Alaska, right here. This is all I think about. Just hanging out and being with the family. What do you think of that? She talks, but we don't know what she says. You're a good man, Moles. No, oh, I don't know. August 7th, got in last night, got all my stuff packed up, ready to go, my camp, my personal gear. It was raining all night, all day, all night. I just stopped here this morning, it's about 7 a.m. And uh, I got about, boy, 85, almost 90 days slated this fall. So she's gonna be a long one. But I'm ready to do her, let the adventure begin. But don't want to carry any more weight than you have to. Jean's going to be the first one heading out. Just so you know, I'm all packed up and ready to go when you get back, Kurt. No pressure. Bush pilots, they have to be part engineers to make all this stuff fit in an airplane. <laughs> that right there is the walk of an Alaskan bush pilot of about 40 years experience. Garb. Got 
641 uh, taxiing out back taxiing to 17 departure will be eastbound. 641 be departing 17 eastbound. Something like that. It's just a wonder that not everybody's lining up to come see this country. Yes. I like it, Curtis. Good. Oh, I think you'll really enjoy it. Here I am. Best way I've ever found to take a little self inventory. life is to watch that airplane fly away for the first time when you're going to be up in the mountains in the wilderness away from your family for about 75 days straight but the thing is I kind of like it I don't know makes me feel comfortable. I don't know. In a strange way, I don't feel alone at all. Just uh, really makes me appreciate what I got. It's like everything, everything that's important to your life floods to the forefront in just, uh, just a matter of seconds or less. So it's a pretty humbling feeling when you're in country like this. And I guess the guys that, uh, that I work with, guys that come to do this, I don't know if that's what they're expecting, but I think that's the greatest thing about hunting in Alaska right there. It's just that feeling, this feeling that I'm feeling right now. I would say about two years ago, I got in a car accident, a woman pulled out in front of me. I hit her head on going about 50 miles an hour. And all I remember, I just, it was like slow motion. I mean, it just, but from the time I knew, the time I saw it happen, it was just a couple of seconds. But I mean, there was about a, seemed like hundreds of flashes came to my mind. And I remember the last thing I saw before I hit was my wife's face. Before I hit that car, I just saw an image of my wife. I mean, just crystal clear, it was her face smiling at me. And I remember just thinking, this is how I'm gonna go out airbag went off long story short I was pretty much fine all the negatives in life are gone for me right now it's only the positives it's just pretty much my family and just uh, yeah probably God you know you just realize how big the earth is and how small I am and uh, how lucky I am to have the blessings I have in my life and how lucky I am to be here I think that's the greatest thing for me that I've experienced in Alaska. Like I say, in a strange way, I love this feeling. You know, I, in a way, I can't wait already to get home to see my family. But uh, these next two and a half months that I'll be in the wilderness just uh, reinforces uh, my knowledge of all the great things that I have in my life. So enough uh, interpersonal chit chat I got a camp to set up I got some rams to find some caribou to find I don't think I'm gonna get a grizzly hunter this year but yeah it's a beautiful spot I've never camped here before so uh, yeah it'll be it'll be neat last year I, I all the spots that I hunted were the uh, were spots that I have hunted in years past so it's kind of nice to get some new some new country once in a while and that's what I got here so I'm looking forward to it 
we'll get the uh, fall season underway. I just called base camp, give them a weather report, and uh, it's a little afternoon and they said planes are on their way, so Dave and Michelle must have got on the early flight for sure, and they must be the first ones out. But I've guided Dave many, many times. I think he's uh, taken a dozen animals in Alaska with me over the years, and I'm certainly looking forward to guiding him, but perhaps maybe even more so guiding Michelle. She's uh, when we talk about it, she's seen my videos and Dave's pictures and stuff. I think she's a little bit, uh, she was a little bit shell-shocked, I think, the idea of her just coming into this wilderness. And, uh, but I know when she leaves it, she's going to walk away with it, uh, an experience of a lifetime. So I'm really excited to see, uh, maybe I guess, her transformation throughout this hunt. So I really do believe that she's really going to enjoy it. She's a, she's a little spark plug, got a great personality, and uh, I can't wait. So, matter of fact, I think I, think I can hear plane. Plane's coming now. There they are. Kurt and Brett are two fine pilots. They got a pretty decent headwind, so... This canyon, like a lot of sheep canyons, they got a land going upstream no matter what, no matter which way the wind's blowing, and they got to take off going downstream because there's not enough room for them to turn around when they take off. And there's not enough room for them to get down fast enough when they land going downstream. Still taxi up here, get out of Brett's way. Here's Michelle's first bush landing. I was hoping you were going to leave that old dog at home, Michelle. <laughs> it's good to see when you I saw again. two airplanes, I'm like, he's going to come. <laughs> well, welcome, guys. Hey, good to see you. The well-armed gal. <laughs> Thank you, man. I might blow some of your stuff away, Billy. Perfect. We're gonna try to blow the black diamond down. Oh no. Brett will give Kurt a few seconds, let the prop wash dissipate. Oh, it's going to be a fun week. Are you guys tired of waiting for me yet? No, I think we're good. You're probably tired of waiting on us. No, they've been waiting on me. These guys are chomping at the bit. We're just going to go around the bend, peek around, look for some caribou. We got uh, 24 hours to wait for sheep, so we're not going to stomp around too much and risk uh, bumping any sheep out of the country. So probably just hike around the bend, sit on our duffs, last for caribou.
about 350 yards from us right now. Well, your first wild grizzly bear and your first dull ram in about five minutes. <laughs> Still just seeing that one ram is all. So we're just gonna keep poking down and looking up these side shoots, left and right. Thought I was gonna get charged by a grizzly and a caribou in the same day. <laughs> this fog's moving in, so we're about three quarters of a mile away. I'm just working down to try to see him. Nothing's legal. It's about four o'clock. We uh, put on 11 miles today. Ended up seeing nine rams. Nothing was legal. It started raining a little before noon. Fog started rolling in. And that was kind of about all I really wanted to cover. Or really really wanted to cover for sure today so got 95% of it anyway so we ended up just uh, hightailing it out of there got back a little bit ago we're just uh, resting in the tent getting out of the the wind and the rain drying out a little bit probably get up do supper in a couple hours hopefully this stuff blows out of here and we'll get at her tomorrow Six thirty. 12th of August. I'm going to head down, poking that drainage right there. How are we going to find a sheep if we're waiting on your old man all the time, Michelle? Waiting. Our grizzly bear, I'm sure that's his tracks two days ago. Three rams, day three. Top one's the biggest, about seven eighths. We are fogged out. Happens pretty regular when you get a bunch of moisture. There's no sense in stomping around in the fog when you can't see anything. So we'll just sit tight, drink, eat, rest, wait for it to blow out, but in blue sky above. So I well, we just spotted Dave's rail all by his lonesome. Looks like that mountain's just kind of all by itself there. So I'm not quite sure how we're gonna do this, but it's like a pretty good ram, probably 36, pretty tight curl, but pretty good mass. Looks like an older sheep. I guess it's 10 or 11, just judging by the way he carries his mass, color of his horns. Fog just covered him up. We're gonna use that to our advantage. We're hauling our tails. I don't know how this is gonna shake out. He's moving pretty good to the right. So obviously we would like for him to wrap around the mountain, get out of sight. But if this fog stays put, it might work, but you can't rely on this fog for too long and you definitely don't want to get caught out in the open with your pants down. So the ram busted off this mountain, got down into the bottom. Now there's two more rams way down low on that side hill. The fog's just swallowing them up now, so we're gonna make her move. There's the ram we're after, a thousand yards away. And then there's two more, kind of beyond and to the left of him. We might be able to work on this same hillside and you can move in on him that way. It's pretty, pretty sketchy, but he's all alone. So at least Rick Dave will know which ram he's shooting at. Yeah, he's a smoker. Never tried stalking sheep like this. We're giving her, he went down in a little cut. We can see two smaller rams that he was working towards, but anywhere where they go, there's no way we can approach them without them seeing us. So we just went for it. Well, we got up in your position. The two smaller rams saw us, which I knew they would. I'm glad they saw us when they did. They kind of worked up that way. The bigger ram was on this side hill and he worked down into this cut. We're hoping he's gonna come out here. We just got here about a minute ago. Well, we've been waiting here about eight minutes. The other rams are moving up. 
this ram isn't popping up, so he must have went up in here somewhere. So we're quickly gonna move up, pop over this ridge. Michelle, how would you describe what happened? Uh, exhilarating and exhausting all at the same time. <laughs> well, you did good. Just another hundred yards. Wait. No, no, just another hundred yards. We gotta work really hard. <laughs> just one more, hundred yards. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> we did it. We first spotted the ram. Son's bad. He was on this mountain and he came down. So we were way up here to the left. So then he worked around down this face below us. Them two smaller rams were right here. And so he worked around this corner. So we sat here about 300 yards away from this face for about yeah, less than 10 minutes. Figured that he wasn't coming through, so then we worked our way up. And we sat and we glassed this for a while. He never came, so we dropped our packs right there. And as we're peeking over, I was watching back and he must have been bedded up in them rocks up there. Or actually right there. So we saw him go over that little rock right in the center of the screen, 640 yards. We just saw him for a peep, so. But there, it's impossible to run that ridge. There's no good way to get on him. The thermals were coming up by this time. Like I always say, it's the defeats that make the victory sweet. Well, this was a lot of fun. A lot of work, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You gotta take the good with the bad. I ain't gonna lie, it sucks, but <laughs> that's hunting. That's hunting. So, it's one of those things, she just didn't work out, I don't know, kind of replaying it in my mind. I can't imagine really doing it a lot different. We could have went up a little bit higher, but in the end, we would have had to go down and check that out low, because he didn't, he sure didn't seem to want to be climbing. But, uh, you know, normally they like getting up in that stuff where we did see him, but, you know, just the way she goes, there was no way to get above him up in those rocks anyway. Boy, I thought Michelle came over here to the bushes to take a nature call. She says, huh, there's a caribou. Nothing's eating on him at all. Huh, he looks perfectly healthy. Might have been that bull we saw the other day. This is what 2 a.m. in the Brooks Range looks like in August. You guys ready to get out of here? Here's the boys coming to move us. That was Brett rounding the bend, there's Kurt. We've just decided we're gonna go move to a new spot where there's some caribou and uh, That'll still be in the sheep mountains where if we're able to get a couple of caribou then we can maybe get one more day for sheep if all works out well. But this hunt's more about just Michelle enjoying her time here so Dave definitely wants to get her a shot at a caribou. That's what we're moving for. There's just no caribou here. Here comes Kurt Dog. I'm just coming right here by the touchdown point just to help him find it and line up on it. Ah, those pilots are good. Blew some rocks up on that one, but not a problem. Made her look pretty easy. From a guy that's done a little bit of cub flying, these guys are pretty good at what they do, no doubt. So you're gonna take off going down then? Down, yeah. And we're gonna run her all the way to the end. <laughs> Kurt with Dave. He'll probably be a little heavier. That was a good one.
<laughs> you made her look easy. <laughs> well, up there, the wind. Was that a cool plane ride or what? Yeah. It was. Gee, it was a beautiful day. And it wasn't even that bumpy. I was pretty surprised. What do we think? Awesome. Sheep burger, mashed potatoes, gravy, corn. Perfect. Just finishing supper and had three rams around the mountain. None of them are legal. Mm -hmm. Sublegal, they call it up here. That's a Roger. You're learning. Come on, boys, where's your daddy? <laughs> We got four rams right from camp. I think these suckers are gonna run down and maybe cross the river right before us. Ah, they very, they'll probably just follow that feed down and grade side hill, but. Maybe it's a good thing. We probably wouldn't be able to hardly handle it if there was a legal sheep there and it's all we could do is sit there and watch him because we flew today, but. He's probably, quite honestly, he's probably, he's less than an inch from full curl. We could probably shoot him probably get away with it but by the letter of the Alaska law he's not full curl um, yeah I guess I've just seen it enough to know but um, yeah he's a nice sheep but not very old and just just plain and simple he's about three quarters of an inch short and that's just the way it is quarter to five Day five or six, I guess. It's the 14th. See what kind of words of wisdom Dave has for us this morning. How's the eye? Uh, much better. That's what I thought. A little sleep needed to clean it up. Well, Dave got something in his eye and had it all scratched up trying to get it out last night. Not a caribou in sight this morning. Got up, last for about a half hour. Nada. We need double strength coffee this morning, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, she's a trooper. Well, we're sitting inside the security of the bear fence. Glass for a half hour this morning, didn't see a caribou. Started coffee, woke up the troops. Then the huntress comes out, and so do the caribou. We got three bulls headed this way right on a string. This hunting in Alaska ain't so tough, huh? Just drink a little coffee, read a book, and <laughs> spot your animal. A rack magnet. Nice. Oh yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Not too bad, huh? No. They're moving. Definitely the biggest we've seen in five days. Yeah. They never got out of sight to where we could make any kind of play, so we're still sitting in camp. 
They're a little over 500 yards away. We're right out of camp and these caribou are just heading right at us so we didn't have any opportunity to move at all. Or eat breakfast. <laughs> Is that really the low point of your morning? <laughs> I got some candy bars in the pack. Coming in like hogs to slop, Dave. I see that. Let's see if the girl can shoot. Oh, I think she'll do just fine. I think so too. After everybody's complimented me on this rifle, I hope I can. Mm -hmm. You know, this is really handy, guys. We're, we're caribou hunting and we don't have to worry about the bears. We're completely safe. <laughs> you can take the safety off. Just keep your, keep, don't have your finger anywhere near the trigger. There you go. You on that first one, Michelle? When he stops, just pick a hair. Right there. Yeah, right behind the shoulder, squeeze it really slow. Wait. Just hold right on him. When he stops, just pick one hair behind the shoulder, squeeze the trigger slow. Right there, if you like it. Reload. Nice Reload. All right, Dave, you can shoot that second one if you want. If you want to use my pack. Okay. All right. Smoke St him. Stand back there, Slayer. <laughs> Gonna have to watch the assassin in action. Are you loaded? Uh huh. Okay. He's the one on the right. Okay. He's the one all the way to the right. Yep. We're gonna might have to put a big sneak on. Nice shot, lady. Right. <laughs> you did perfect. Okay, he might pop right back up. We can see his head now. Yeah, he'll come up, Dave. Yep, I'm gonna wait on him. Yeah, as long as we're meat hunting, we might as well get a good clean shot. Yeah, exactly. Uh -oh. Okay, uh, he'll he'll stop when he gets up high. Just don't shoot through my fence. I won't. <laughs> Is that the one on the right? Yep. Ep. Ep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, yeah, they'll they'll come right over here. <laughs> Swing it quick because he's running. Using, using the tent as a blind. <laughs> we don't want to tax you too hard today. Yeah. Billy, since you're right next to it, you could make me a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> While I wait. I couldn't have scripted this any better, Dave. That's him, isn't it? Yeah, got his head down. Yeah. Right there if you want it. Well, I'm corner of the tent. Okay. Other one's clear, isn't it? Yep. You ready? Yep. You hit him high. This way, wait, 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 wait. This way. He's to the left of the three, yet yeah, you just grazed his back. He's down. Back up. Wait. Just yeah. wait. Wait till he stopped before you put another one in him. Right there. Uh, you hit right on his spine. Well, got his lungs anyways. Maybe it wasn't, yeah, he's not flinching. Maybe it wasn't as high. It looked like he was right on his spine, but it obviously wasn't. Yeah, Must have there. sizzled right through him. Yeah. Mine was further away, too. I thought you shot the tent. <laughs> <laughs> you go, well, that was nice. Hey, we got a Oh! Well, Kurt said, well, maybe you guys can just shoot two right on the runway. And by God, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the other thing, Michelle, we don't have to pack yours at all. Yep. Dave's, we got at least a 60 yard pack. 60 yards? <laughs> well, hey, this caribou hunting ain't so tough, huh? 
Meat for the freezer now. Took all of about 45 minutes. <laughs> uh -huh. Good job. Yeah, I think what I thought was Dave hitting high, I think it was him shot him through the lungs and I saw the air just rise up above its spine. I was looking through the camera, but uh, probably be able to tell on the video. But yeah, I think he must have just center punched him right through the lungs and then a little bit of vapor and hot air came right above the spine. Those rams are still right up there from last night. They just bedded right in that little bowl. Pretty nice. Yep. So yeah, we'll for sure at least have one more day of sheep hunting, weather permitting. Billy, I don't know if you knew this, but I've got ice water running through my veins as well. Out a girl. <laughs> Dave and I are a matched set. In the, in the pack today. He's got a nice white cape. I don't know if I've ever really noticed that white on the forehead. That's kind of neat. Pretty thin summer coat. Nice shooting, McLean. How'd she do, Dave? She did great. Just like you guided her, just like you explained to her where to put the bullet, how to wait. Well, you learned from the best, McLean. I sure did. Thanks a lot, Billy. Well, not me, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, you did you did very well. The stock was a little anticlimactic, but hey, we uh, it worked out perfect. And so this is your first hunting trip to Alaska. Yes, it is. And so Dave brought you along to share in 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 uh, what he's passionate about and what he enjoys. And uh, I guess describe uh, describe the hunt thus far and your experience, your whole experience leading up to this morning. Billy's really pushed me and Dave too. Um, well, they've really watched out for me as well. Um, I think I've tried to keep up as much as I possibly can. And it's just, couldn't be anywhere more beautiful than this. It's been great. I'd love to do it again. We got moved into this camp last night. I, it was just, it was probably one of the best evenings I've had in a long time. Just the sunset, watching the sheep on the mountain. We saw a couple of caribou. Uh, we actually didn't see any bulls yesterday. And uh, worked out pretty slick. We just woke up early this morning. I got up uh, about 4.30, started glass and didn't see any caribou. Roasted these guys a little after five. And uh, like I say, there wasn't much stock to be had. We kept waiting for them to get out of sight, but they just kept more or less coming to us, so we just stayed put. And uh, that's the name of the game, caribou hunting, and any kind of hunting is just uh, uh, use whatever you have to your advantage. It just so worked out that uh, they came pretty much right to us. So congratulations, it's been a blast thus far. Dave's got a caribou down here about 200 yards to the right. We're gonna take some pictures and uh, get this thing unzipped and let them start cooling down. We got a beautiful day. Meat will be just fine, and uh, you two will definitely be taking all the meat home. I know that, Dave. Yep, that's a fact. Dave's the only hunter I've ever guided that brings 100% of everything home, even his moose, so. Ready for another one? Great. <laughs> it's actually a fairly old caribou. And judging by the wear of his teeth, I gotta figure he's Gosh, she's got to be at least four years old. Caribou strip pretty nice. Get them cooled off real quick. We're getting some white socks, so we'll take care of this one completely before we go to Dave's. It shouldn't take but half hour at the most. So. She do all right, Dave? She did great. Perfect. Got to like it. Mm -hmm. Got a proud papa over there. Uh, a lot of fun. So now what we'll probably do is get back, get this all taken care of. We'll probably get Dave's butchered, then eat some breakfast, and then uh, get them all taken care of. Call the pilots. They'll probably come in one fail swoop, pick them both up out of here. Then we'll have tomorrow for sheep, maybe half of the next day, particularly if we see anything good or if we're on the trail of a ram or a legal ram. Well, it was two perfect shots. The guide was too busy in the video camera and thought you spined it, but yeah, you slammed it through the lungs both times, Dave. But well done. Thank you. Nothing but the best is what I expect from you. It's what we got. Well, I don't know about that. Well, look, we don't have to go very far. We don't have a sheep yet, but we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have another day at least. It looks like. Yeah.
a lot of fun. It's a fine job, you guys. We'll get these uh, guys taken care of and uh, should have them done here heck before lunchtime. So <laughs> get them busted into shape. The sun's just rising up over the mountains. Obviously not very far to pack from camp. And uh, we'll keep our eyes peeled for some sheep and we'll be eating some uh, some real meat again tomorrow night for supper. There you go. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, these little white socks, they got me all, as soon as you get blood on you, they start moving in town. There's one of them. You can see his teeth from here. <laughs> They're nasty little devils and they bite hard and bite often. We got the meat in the willows there. Michelle's is still over there. Do or die time, Mr. Caston. Crunch time. Here we go. We're heading about two miles of that draw, and then it runs about six miles deep, so we'll be putting in one heck of a day today. It's gonna sprinkle. Yeah, should be raining a little bit as we speak. This is what I call a tundra bog. We got about another. Oh, maybe a half mile of this crap. Then we should hit hard river bed. Walk that all up, all the way up into that drainage. I've got a fairly substantial ram. But he's over three miles away. Right there. If he moves around, I might be able to get a better idea of how big he is. He's facing away right now. Yeah, probably three and a half miles. That's why I carry a two pound tripod or whatever it is in a three pound scope. It's heavier than most, but just saved us a ton of miles right there. Oh, this is a screwy deal. It's the same four rams we saw from the tent last night. Actually, one of, one of these, I'd say it's probably like a 99% chance he's legal. He's only six years old. He's broomed on the one side and then kind of broken on the other side, but he's kind of got a tip, but he's six, maybe seven years old, that one on the skyline. I studied those rams. For an hour and a half. Just can't call them legal. Doesn't look like this in Iowa. You can't find anything like this. <laughs> beautiful. It's harder for me to walk away from that sheep than it was for Dave. I know that. Dave had no problem with it. Thing is, you start pushing the envelope, eventually you're gonna get burned. When you start pushing things, when are you gonna stop pushing? Pretty much about the time you get burned. caribou bull. Not a whopper, but a very nice one. Hey, here we are. David and Michelle. It's uh, our last day. Our plane's going to be coming to pick us up here in a little bit. About 30 minutes or so. But um, just had a, a great time. It's great to see Michelle up here. Uh, see what she thinks of this wonderful land. And Didn't have a lot of inclement weather. Uh, today notwithstanding, 
But you know, you always have a little bit of rain and so forth, but uh, no snow. Yeah, no snow, so that's good. <laughs> Had a great time, saw lots of animals. Um, got two great caribou. We'll be eating those uh, this winter. Be really nice. The sheep uh, kind of eluded us, but uh, we got to see a lot of them. Just uh, not too many legal ones, but uh, no, really a great time. I uh, look forward to it every time I get up here. It's, it's always a blast, and I'm very happy able to uh, share that with Michelle. And uh, it's been great. I think we had a good time. You know, it makes me happy too to be able to share in something like this. I've been to, I've been to Alaska before, but just doing the tourist thing down in Anchorage and the Kenai, and so coming up here is kind of like a different world. It's it's a little bit it's a little bit rougher. It's a little bit more more virile. I don't know. It's a uh, Kind of an assault on the senses in some respects. Very relaxing. From our, our hectic, industrious, busy lives, this is very, very relaxing. So I enjoy it. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. We really had a lot of fun. It uh, There's something to be said for pushing someone over the edge and, and really kind of making them stronger, if you will. Yep. Um, I think it really helped Michelle. She found out a little bit more about herself. It's deep inside. Okay, well, signing off. Thanks again, Billy. You're the one. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Take care. Well, here come the boys. What was that, bud? Hey. Another great another adventure. Year, another great hunt. Yes, yeah, sir. A lot of fun. Take care of that young lady. I'm gonna. about as much fun as I've had a hunt in a long time. Great people, it's great to hunt with Dave again, hunt with Michelle. I think it's an experience that she won't soon forget. They're already talking about what they're, what hunt they're gonna do together next. Uh, maybe my next hunter might get in as early tomorrow, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. But I'll break her down, get her ready, get ready for round number two. Here cometh the fly boys. Hello. How are you? Peachy. Oh, yeah. I think that big rock scared him a little bit. You hopped neatly over that rock, Kurt. I liked it. Thank you. It was perfectly done. Where in the hell are we going? Right down the hole. You remember rock pile? I remember lots of things. Well, if you'd have told me that it was going to be raining where you were taking me, Kurt, I don't know if I'd have jumped in the plane. <laughs> it was so nice when we left. I know. Where to get those? That's Choctaw. Oh, is that what it is? Yep. I'm going to have to weave from side to side here, Bill, trying to get this line. Founder, Boogie Kurt Dog. Well, Tarmigan got flushed out. in my little hidey hole. Knife edged ridges, steep mountains, but there's usually sheep in here. So we're gonna give her a try.
laundry time. If the sun would ever peek out, might even take a little spit bath. Probably gonna take a spit bath whether the sun pokes out or not. Shining over that way, but I'm right, uh, right in these mountains. The weather's just settling. Moose calf. Tell it's Kurt because of the leading edge of his wings are white, breaths are red. chocolate from a hunter's wife. What's your wife's name? Nancy. Nancy? Well, you thank her for me, John. I will. I'm going to get fat and sassy on these buggers. I think we both will. John's hunt. There's that big old grizzly. Well, John's hunt starting good so far. Yesterday afternoon we saw three small rams right on that face. We're just about ready to take off and glassed up there. There's actually five rams at least. A couple of them on the skyline. You can see one on that near that saddle. The one looks pretty good, so instead of coming out this drainage, we're going to go up it. They're right at the top, so they could very easily bound over there. Well, right there, first morning out, Beagle Ram, more or less within sight of camp. Caused a change of plans. We're supposed to go down this draw, but we went up it. It's like the old saying, never leave fish to find fish. See a legal ram, go at it. That's right. No matter what the plan was. Adapt, and, adapt and overcome. Yeah. It's quarter after seven. Typically they're feeding by now and I'm sure they will be at some point. Uh, so we got the downhill thermals. We're just gonna play it by ear. You know, we got them close. We're about two miles away right now. So we got enough food for a day or two. Might end up being a bit of a waiting game, but we'll just uh, play her by ear. So you think those sheep are about a thousand feet above us? Oh no, they're they're over two thousand feet above us. Yeah. Okay. John and I dumped our stuff quarter to nine and spotted a couple of rams, a couple of young rams. So yeah, these are different sheep, I'm pretty sure. So we're gonna scoot up this spine peek over and more or less get to where they were. I'm shaking because I'm a little cold. They just drank a whole bunch of water and getting ready to climb. I don't have many clothes on. Ready to give her a go, John? Right on. Now ready? Let's do it. There you can see our tent. It's about two and a half miles. That's where we dropped our stuff. I hope we're not making this climb in vain. These are the kind of spots where sheep like to bed. See all the scat here. Little outcrops where they can see below them. The thermals are pretty well coming up. Sheep, we think, went over to the backside. They might have went to that saddle up there where those other ones did, but I got a hunch that they went that way towards that better feed. Came up here. This is where the rams were. 
No, this is where they are. Sure as heck hope they don't go down across the other side of the creek. If we'd have just walked up the bottom, we might have got a shot at them. Yeah, that sucks. Climb for nearly two hours. Peek over. And find them right down near the bottom. The wind's been swirling a fair bit. The wind direction's going this way. The thermals were coming down, but I think they've switched. They're generally going up, but it's swirling, I'm guessing, down there too. They're just starting to feed, so they ain't moving too far. So we're pretty much just gonna stay right here, hold their elevation. There you can see the smaller one. There's another one, then two, and the big one's down to the left. So we're hopeful they feed around to the left. That little open bowl right there is like a magnet. They usually like to go to that, so I'm hoping that's what they'll do. 12.30, they're all on their feet now. And they're kind of feeding side hill. So hopefully they do in fact wrap around. Here's the ram we're after. Looks like he's 10 years old at least. Broomed a little bit. He's full curl anyway. He's a good sheep. We just gotta figure out a way to get him. Well, we're working our way up. Three of the rams are out of sight. Just two left. This will go up. Side hill over. Run the ridge down, try to find them. It's pretty slick rock here. Balance is real important on this stuff. Balance, back strength, and core strength. Of course, now I'm not using both my sticks. Don't try this at home. <laughs> Side hilling and shale, isn't it grand? Yeah. Right over there. Over that one there. Yeah, that's where we came from. Side hilled all the way around. Now we're going to peek over the saddle. Well, when we peeked over, we saw three of the rams bedded on the far ridge already. And then we just caught a glimpse of the big ram going down into the next drain in here down below just for a split second and then all of a sudden we saw the rest of them go up so it would be weird that they'd split up but we haven't seen uh, the big one come back up with those other ones yet he could have while we're stalking here now we're sneaking through the next bowl so they were we were watching them right up there i had a little video of them earlier and the big one went down and then the other while well, the other ones were bedded and they eventually just wandered up so i'm not sure quite what's going on here but uh we'll see it's a small one Another 
around in the chamber. Okay. I'm still on, I'm still on fire. I think that was... I can't pick him up. No, no, he's just right there. Don't, don't shoot. Yeah. One safe. You got yourself a fine ram, John. Wow, I can't believe they, they just split up like that. Two went there, two stayed, and he just went down below. There they are, one, two, three, four. Huh. We stocked that, <laughs> we stocked that ram all day. It's 4.30, you can see the tent. Right there. We climbed up the back of that ridge, went around by the time we got up there. They were up over here. We saw them up here. The two middle-sized ones, they went up, or the two bigger ones other than the big one, they went up. And I just figured those other ones followed. When we peeked, we saw the big ram come down by himself, and but we never saw him come back up. And uh, yeah, so I don't know, they just kind of split up on their own. This one was down here all by his lonesome. You just got yourself a nice ram. He's at least 10. That's a nice ram. He's an old, old sheep. That's a nice ram, thank you, Billy. You betcha. Well, you wanted a, a, a mountain hunting adventure in the Brooks Range, and I'd say you got her. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. Didn't always go like it is planned on, but you know, that's why it's not a video game. Yeah. It's the real deal, and real things happen. And we were chasing them, chasing after them, and kept getting seven, eight hundred yards away from them, and the wind was right, everything worked. He's a good sheep. Perfect. It, it Perfect. worked. Perfect play of the wind. He's fairly low, too. I know. That's even better. Yeah. And our garb is laying right around down there. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I love it when a plan comes together. First day ram. You gotta love it. <laughs> Did you see the, that, that, that one ram's eyeballs were red? <laughs> he was bloodshot, or they looked, looked like there was a red flare to him. It was about seven yards from him, and I told John, step out, check this out, because it's, it it's going to happen. I saw him when he first went up, he was looking right at us, and he didn't get up right away, and I just stepped back. And I was waiting to hear clump, 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 yeah. I didn't hear anything. Well, I don't know about you, John, but I like him. Wow. A great animal. He's, he's frothing a little bit. John Maddock, first day, first shot. Probably a 36 and a half, 37 inch ram, 10 and a half. She's a beaut. Gonna be hard to top, my friend. I know. Nice sheep, perfect stock, perfect reading of the wind. Laid it up. Even the, the, the pack placement as the rest. Perfect. Well, thank you, thank you. And I gotta say, as far as uh, as far as rocks go, this climb today was—I mean, I've done steeper, but it was they, every rock was loose. It was a tough, tough climb. And I realized one thing: how important balance is. Just the fact that I'm more used to these mountains, obviously, than John is. It's just just his balance. You know, he trip more than I did, and so I, I really realized how important balance is. And, I don't know. I'm sure there's exercises you can do to help you for that, but I got to think just time in the mountains is what you need. 14 year old boy, what, 11, 14 year old boy, Brooks Range. Here it is. Oh, that's it. Oh, yeah, it's like so, 40 some years later. Here I am. That 40 year dream right here, huh? Well, that's right fantastic. Here. Congratulations again, John. Yeah, thank you. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. There's the four that were with this ram. Then four more came around the bend. There's two at the bottom, and then there's one on that ledge, and then one just behind it. Put the scope on these five rams. Just definitely curious if there was anything legal for the next hunt. Barry comes in, but nothing quite legal. There one might be he's probably eight years old, but far from full curl. Gotta love it. Big old ram on the ground. Check that out. About a half inch of fat right along the back strap of that bugger. He's not a real big ram. But he's gonna be some fine eating, I guarantee you. As far as wild game goes, it doesn't get any better than that right there. Except for this little number. Some tenderloin and sheep back strap. Don't get a whole heck of a lot better than that. How's she riding, John? We'll find out in a minute. Like a dream? 
Like a dream. Feels pretty good. All right. Well, we ain't got too far to go, so. All right. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. I'm gonna loop that way. All right. It's uh, about eight o'clock. And we're gonna head on down. I don't know if we brought a, we were gonna spike out. So I don't know, I'll see how John's feeling, but I think we'll probably just boogie all the way back down to the tent down there. We'll leave the sheep meat up here, hanging in some willows. I got a tarp. And uh, so we'll just tarp it up here. We'll go all the way back down to base camp then come back and get the meat in the morning. So I'm plugging along, slow and steady, and the rain's coming pretty darn quick. But life is good. Cape's rinsing in the creek. We got our junk, we dropped it right over here, so we're gonna grab hold of it and head back tonight. Almost home, 11.30, I'm tired. Make her back to camp, boil some water, dump it in a bag, eat it, roll up my sleeping pad, blow it up, crawl in my sleeping bag, and expire. Sunday today, the 19th. We're on the trail of three caribou. Right up there. We're gonna try to get up to that ridge. See what they do. Oh, we had him 250 yards. John, windy. John wasn't sure whether he wanted to shoot him or not. The time he decided he wanted to do his 400 yards and there's no catching him. Fishing game is trying to find a place to land at our camp. If he makes it on the ground, we'll go meet him. Yeah, it looks like he said screw it, couldn't figure out where where to land. John and I are up here glassing for caribou, actually right when we got here pretty much. We've been up here for four or five hours now. Right when we got here I spotted a I'm sure it's a wolf killed bull caribou across the river hoping to see some wolves. We heard wolves howling the early morning hours when we got back with John's ram across the river in that general direction, a little bit further upstream to the left. And we haven't seen any caribou since the one we chased uh, from camp today, so. These caribou just popped out over this little rise. I think they're the same bunch we saw yesterday. There's one pretty decent bull. They're kind of working their way up again. They must have came out last night. Been down in here and they're working their way up to the right. So we'll sneak around, the wind's going this way. So we'll get up on this ridge. They're, not, they're just feeding so they're not moving fast like they were yesterday. Climbing up over this little ridge. There they are. A couple decent bulls. This is almost tougher than sheep hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Sprinting. <laughs> well, I guess the, the reason why we're moving so fast is because they're kind of slowly feeding away. And we saw how fast caribou can move yesterday, didn't we? You can't catch them, so they're feeding, so we're just gonna hustle up. They're moving down in the creek. You ready, John? We'll just side hill around here, and we'll kind of try to meet up with them. It's 400 now. Pretty tough to get a lot closer. The bull in the bottom, I think, is the best. They're trying to get into the willows for cover. This one here, I think, sees us. We're out in the open. So we're just freezing. Hopefully, you'll forget about it. 250 yards now. We're sneaking through the willows. I think we're gonna get him. Okay, on about 10. He's the lead one. 
You on the first one? Yep. Yeah. Kind of light colored horns. Yep. <laughs> Reload, you hit him. Okay, he's still the first one. Wait, wait, wait. You get a good stop. Okay, hold it right there. I think you smoked him. Him. Hey, just wait, he's down. Yeah, he ain't moving now. You got him, buddy. There's the other one. The scope going down. <laughs> yeah, he's done. He hasn't moved there for a couple of seconds. Uh, now I see him. Okay, just wait. You got him. You hit him twice. I think you hit him good on that first one. Atta boy! Oh, I think I that was the... You. I could told you I could shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about 2, 220, 210, somewhere in there. Very nice. We didn't have a lot of cover, but it worked out. They they just saw a little bit of movement. They saw us moving and they eventually got nervous and they started going back. I'm going to unload the chamber. Cool. Nice one. Nice one. We're Safe. on safety. boy. <laughs> got a nice caribou. That's a nice one. That's a pretty darn nice meat bull. Nice meat bull, you know. There'll be plenty on that. Plenty for the table on a beautiful day. Yeah, that was the same one we had 250 yards from the tent yesterday, I think. If not, this one's a hair bigger. He looks bigger today, maybe. Yeah. He grew overnight. Huge. Huge. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're about three quarters of a mile from camp. We had to put a little sneak on him, which was kind of fun. So, should we go check him out? Let's check him out. Very good. Let's go. Well, he's looking like a pretty good pile of meat from here, John. Yeah, he is. Chicken fried caribou. Caribou chili, <laughs> caribou burger, caribou stew, roast steak chops, mild Italian sausage, loose and link, of course. <laughs> the loose you make a ragu with the link, peppers and onions in the oven. Father-in-law really likes that. He yeah. being Italian and all. Yeah, I love it. There we are, man. I like it. Are you happy, John? I'm very happy. Here it is, into the hunt. Not sure exactly what day it is, which is the way it's supposed to be when you're in the wilderness. Just enjoy every day. This morning, slept nicely, got up. Good cheesy scrambled egg breakfast and granola. Look up from our camp since being out in the wilderness and all, there they are. Quickly got our stuff together. Camp's about a mile that way. Hoofed it, had to uh, sneak, use the ground cover here, uh, the, the topography for cover. Sneak up, drop down into the willows down there and put a sneak on to within uh, just under 200 yards. Put a couple of rounds in them and meet for the freezer. Thank all the hunters that came before us. Show us the way. I'm carrying on that tradition and I hope you do too. He looks bigger on your back. Probably feels a little bigger. Yukon John reporting from the Brooks Range. That's what I'm talking about. Just enjoying the day. Can't beat it. There's Kurt Dog. I'm gonna pick up the sheep and caribou. Yeah. 
That is so cool. <laughs> Just landing on that rough yeah. little patch of tundra. Yeah, taking off, boy, man. That is so cool. I mean, it's a guy thing. <laughs> We're hiking along. There's seven wolves across the river. Right there, there's a couple leading them. So we're gonna get behind that bush right there and then walk directly at them. See if we can figure out an approach. So we got the river in between us. They're gonna probably be able to see us. But they, they've seen us already, I'm sure. We got that caribou, she's named Ptarmigan. Scared the crap out of me. Wolf hunts don't always work out the way you hope. We got these few bushes right there. They're probably about 50 yards behind them. So we're walking right at them. Just kicked out a pup. Here's another one. They're all right here. There goes a pup. Might not be a female in here. See that one right there, yeah. That's a pup right there. This is their den right in here. Okay. Yeah, there's no there's no adult. One went boogied out to the left. Well, we ended up hiking back over to where that caribou kill was and watched it for a while. I think what happened, you know, all we saw, we busted the five wolf pups there. So I think the male and female were the, that was the two wolves that I saw going over that little ridge heading up the valley. So I think they took off to hunt for the day. So we sat for a couple hours watching that kill, didn't see any sign of them. Wind kind of switched on us, blew up the canyon. So we pretty much just bagged it. About 7.30, morning of day five of John's hunt. Finally, my first good herd of caribou bulls for the fall. Seems like the, seems like this is kind of typical, seems like around the 20th, 25th of August. Yeah, you really start seeing herds of bulls moving, moving through. Um, I don't know if this is the female or the male, but I'm guessing the female. She's right where we busted the pups up yesterday, near where I think their den is, and she's howling. I think trying to bring them all back together. We'll go put a little sneak on her again. And Gators are pretty handy in a crossing like that. So then we're just gonna get, oh, there she is right there. I see her. Right there. She might very well see us, but she's looking for her pups. Right there. We found uh, four moose sheds in that willow thicket just a little bit. We walked through it yesterday, so I'm sure uh, I'm sure those wolves take a fair number of moose down during the course of a year, not just the uh, caribou. Life does not get much better than this in the Brooks Range. There's muskox. Did you see one yes, on your drive? Yeah, yeah, you, muskox on the you drive see, You've seen that already. All right. Yeah. The only thing we haven't seen is moose. Yeah, we got a heck of a good looking sow with some year and a half old cubs. You know, I think most guys that come on a hunt like this, they have a vision. Now maybe it comes from the wrong place and then, you know, they're looking for something different in a hunt. But for me, you know, the vision, the vision comes from the, the vision that the 14 year old boy had come to the Brooks Range and experience the wilderness, experience the hunt, put a heavy load on your back and hike hard. You know, that's that's the vision. I wanted that vision. And so he got to the point where it's like, okay, I'm gonna, do, I want to do this. I don't want to get to the point I'm 70 or 80 or 90 and I'm looking back and going, damn, something that was so important to me uh, as a boy, and when I had the wherewithal as a man, I didn't accomplish it. It's like, no, I'm gonna do that. 
So you figure you can put it together uh, financially, time-wise, support of the family, and uh, you make it happen. It's a culmination of a long time of wanting to do it and then putting the plan together over the last year. Thank you all, everybody, for helping me do this. Achieve that boyhood dream. That right there, that attitude, it's just a decision. I've come to the conclusion that the average person can do a hunt or two like this in his lifetime, but there's some people that the fear gets the best of them. The fear of what their buddies are gonna say if they come and go on a sheep hunt and can't do it, or uh, spend all that money and don't get a sheep. I've talked to enough people in my life, enough sportsmen, it's mostly the fear that holds them back. I know the same was for me when I went up here to become a guide. That was the toughest thing to do it, was to go to guide school out of high school. Was to send the deposit, and jump in my truck, and drive away from Turtle Lake, Wisconsin. That was by far the toughest thing that I did. But maybe you don't want to hunt. Maybe you want to, I don't know, paint a picture. Whatever. Some people just uh, thrive on it, the challenge. Go head on, just do it. Find a way and do it, whatever it is. So we're gonna get John packed up here where we get all sentimental and emotional on you and uh, pack him out. He's, uh, he's, I think he's wishing he hadn't volunteered to leave a little early, but such is life. So he'll get back to base camp. I guess a day and a half early. Cheers, Cheers. my man. Good to meet you. It's a pleasure hunting with you, John. Apparently it's time for you to go, huh? What a bummer. But you know what, like Peachy Barnum always said, always leave them wanting more. Yeah? Secret to a good show. Did you get a good nap? Well, we just, we were wolf hunting. We just got back about 10 seconds ago. Really? Uh, well, the cook wanted you home by dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I guess that's oh. kind of hard to argue oh. with. Well, very good. Thanks again, John. All Take right, care, man. my friend. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Kurt. You betcha, Bill. We'll see you uh, in a day or so. Very well. And he's off. Heck of a guy. Uh, I'll never forget him. Hope to hunt, hunt with him again. Um, just like so many guys that I've hunted with before. Uh, my pleasure to meet him. Learned a lot from him. And uh, yeah, rest up, get ready to do her all over again. Got some leftover taco meat from last night. My favorite pilot brought me a couple of Frosties. Chilled them down in the river. Probably, I'm guessing I'll probably move. I've seen a fair number of rams in here, but nothing else is legal, so I'd like to move. So if there's time, Kurt said he'd, he'd get me moved in someplace different. So uh, yeah, enjoy a couple of days R and R. But definitely ready to head for the mountains, try to find another sheep. It's the 25th of August. Been raining and blowing here ever since John left. There's that black wolf. I think that's the male of the crew. I was hoping to move farther up into the mountains, but the weather's been kind of nasty. I haven't seen a legal ram other than the one uh, John took, so yeah, I'd like to get moved if it's possible. 
Uh, my next hunter, Barry, he'll be coming in tomorrow. So today is kind of the day to move if we can, but. Hello, hello, this is, this is Billy. Yeah, uh, yeah, nothing new to report. It's, it's marginal. Yeah, is Kurt there? Is he, he out flying? It looks kind of, looks kind of nasty your way. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, I don't think, yeah, we talked about going upstream. I don't think that's going to work, so. All right. Thanks, Keith. But, uh, yeah, last night I was laying in bed, just excited for Barry to get here and to hunt with him. Uh, <laughs> Barry's just one of those guys, his energy is just contagious. You know, he's just a great guy. You know, he's just excited about everything. He just loves life, I guess. And, and uh, this has been his dream. Has been his, his dad dreamed of killing a doll sheep or hunting doll sheep. He never did. And uh, it's been Barry's dream for a long, long time. Uh, he hunted bear with me last uh, fall in the peninsula. And uh, for 20 years of his life, Barry could barely walk. A lot of times he was on crutches and canes and stuff. He had a couple bad knee accidents. Got both of his knees replaced. He's been training for a couple of years and I know he's going to be ready to hunt some sheep when he gets here and I can't wait to hunt with him. It's going to be a great hunt. Uh, we'll just see how she shakes out but I know we're going to have a heck of a good time.